Hello everyone. Today we are going to discuss with you one of the most common injuries of human body, bone fractures. So how to diagnose these bone fractures? How to diagnose fractures? So for this you should examine the local site where the injury occurred. The main questions you are interested in. Is there a fracture or not? If you look locally at the fracture site, you will see that there is some bruising, hematoma and swelling at the fracture site. Usually these are very common clinical signs for injuries. But do you know is there a fracture or not? So how to check? For these scenes we have so called very fine clinical signs. This will help you to make the diagnosis. If you will check this area and you will see a gross deformity, uh, you will see a crepitation and you will see pathological mobility. So in this case you are sure that the fracture is present. So let's start from the deformity. In many cases the length of the segment is changed. So to know this, you should check the length of the segment and compare it with another one. To measure the length of the segment, we have special bony points that are protruding under the skin. So for tibia, we should check it from the tip of medial malleolus or the tip of lateral malleolus to the gap of the knee joint between tibial head and femoral condyle. If the lens is changed or you see that there is some angulation of the fracture side or you see there is some rotation when the foot is twisted So, you know that there is a deformity at the fracture site and it would be the main clinical sign for fracture which is displaced. Another thing you should check is the presence of so-called pathological mobility. So, you are looking at the fracture site performing movement in this area. If there is movement at the fracture site then you understand that there is a fracture. So you also can hear a crepitation due to the friction between bone fragments. And that would be another very fine clinical sign for a fracture. You also should check the range of motion in the nearest joints and these will be restricted. So, many cases you can see that active movement and passive movement are restricted. Active movement, that's a movement the patient is performing by himself without your help. And passive movement, when doctor is doing this movement for a patient. So, I say again, for fractures, both movements will be restricted they will be very painful and in some cases even absent. So, thank you very much.